Will our universe come to an end? Will it rip to shreds in a flash? Collapse on itself? Or will it slowly freeze to death? Scientists are imagining the unimaginable. And they're coming up with some wild ideas about how it's all going to end. This is the end of the universe. A battle is taking place in the farthest reaches of space. No one can see it, but scientists are certain that it's happening and that the outcome is grim. The universe is going to end. It won't happen for billions of years, but there is no way out. Working out how it will end is the challenge of astrophysicists around the world. They're pointing high-tech equipment out toward the heavens to unlock the secrets of our fate. The possibilities are frightening. In one scenario, gravity pulls the universe back into itself, similar to air being let out of an inflated balloon. The universe goes back to its original size. This is the big crunch. It would be the end of the universe and a big fireball as all the matter collapses onto itself. That would be pretty dramatic. Then there's the big chill. The universe expands until the nuclear furnaces that power all the stars burn out. The universe grows cold and dies. A second possibility is actually kind of sad. The universe will continue to expand forever and it will just grow into an increasingly cold and lonely place as the expansion removes our nearest neighbors from us and we just end up a single isolated community of stars and galaxies. Then again, there could be a much more spectacular end in which everything is ripped to shreds down to the last atom. Think of it like a balloon that is filled with too much air. It pops much more dramatic than the big chill and just as fateful as the big crunch. The universe continues to expand, but at an ever quickening pace. And in fact, the pace is so great that even the space-time fabric cannot hold the universe together. However the end comes, it will be a dramatic conclusion. To understand how it all could end, Scientists turn to how it began. The mystery starts to be solved here at Mount Wilson Observatory overlooking Pasadena, California. In 1929, while looking through what was then the world's largest telescope, Edwin Hubble makes a strange discovery. The universe is expanding. Hubble's discovery led to a whole new picture of the universe, that it was a dynamic environment and that it evolved it changed in time, and that's different from pictures that people had of cosmology previous to that. Before Hubble, scientists said that the universe was static and unchanging. Hubble's discovery that the universe is expanding meant it had a starting point. A beginning. That brought the idea forward that, hey, what if we ran the film backwards in time and found the point at which that began? And that was where the idea of a Big Bang came from. The Big Bang, that fraction of a second when the universe and everything in it exploded into existence from a point smaller than an atom. One common misconception about the Big Bang is that we can identify a point in space where the Big Bang occurred. But in fact, it's more appropriate to think of the Big Bang as a simultaneous creation everywhere of space, which is then continuing to expand to the present day. 
If the universe has been expanding since the Big Bang, scientists must consider that it will stop expanding at some point. The question is, how? The most obvious answer involves gravity. What goes up must come down. Stars and galaxies and everything else might reverse direction. The universe would collapse in what some scientists call a big crunch. Take the top and then see the other handle and just jerk them apart. A model rocket offers clues to how the big crunch would work. The rocket is like the universe expanding into space out of the Big Bang. An initial bang allows the rocket to overcome the pull of gravity. The engine blast gets the rocket moving off its launch pad. It accelerates into the air and breaks free of gravity's pull for the moment. It appears as it's climbing upward that it will never stop. But Earth's gravity won't allow this to go on forever. Eventually, when the fuel is exhausted, the rocket coasts about a meter higher, stops, and is pulled back to Earth. This is what would happen with a big crunch. The entire universe is essentially pulled back to its launch pad. The universe itself has its own momentum, its own energy. It's moving outward. But eventually, there's a point where possibly the universe will stop that moving outward, just like the rocket that we saw, and have to fall back in upon itself and collapse again under the force of its own gravity. In this scenario, the universe could return to its original state just before the Big Bang, setting the stage for a perpetual seesaw of creation and destruction. The Big Crunch theory moved to a scientific back burner. Cosmologists worked out that there must be some form of energy that keeps the universe from collapsing. The existence of such a force leads to new theories about what the universe is made of and how it might end. And evidence about how this might play out is found in some of the most powerful and mysterious phenomena in the cosmos, black holes. Predicting how the universe will end involves some of the most advanced technology known to man. On a remote volcano on the island of Hawaii, astronomers are monitoring a battle in space that is shaping the fate of the universe. At an elevation of nearly 4,300 meters, the Keck telescopes bring astronomers from all over the world nearer to space for a clearer view of the cosmos. They come here because the telescopes work best far away from city lights and as high as possible above the Earth's polluted air. Harsh conditions make it difficult to work here, but for scientists in pursuit of the great mysteries above, it's paradise. So this is a remarkable location, but of course the air is very thin, it's extremely hard to work here, but these telescopes are amazingly powerful. But we're ambitious astronomers. We don't just stop looking at easy objects. We try hard to look at the very faintest objects so we can understand the extremities of the universe, the most distant objects that tell us about the universe when it was very young. Here, astronomers like Richard Ellis are working on a problem that has been all-consuming for cosmologists since Edwin Hubble. They know the universe is expanding, but what they don't know is how fast. It will be difficult to predict exactly how the universe will end until they solve this mystery. The answers lie in the past. An astronomer like myself uses a ground-based telescope as a time machine. We're looking back in time to study distant galaxies seen as they were a long, long time ago. Richard Ellis and scientists like them train their telescopes on light from the past. 
They're seeing things that validate long-standing theories about the cosmos by observing objects that technology has only recently been able to see.